today's scripture reading is from Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And now we welcome Vera. So our sermon title for today is called When God Seems Silent. Has anyone experienced an encounter with God where he broke through all of your walls of uncertainty, created absolutely no doubt in your mind that he is good and loving and worthy of praise, while also answering your deepest prayer, winning your trust and saving the day? Yeah, me too. I've had moments like those where God was undoubtedly working in my life, so much so that I had no other way to thank him than falling to my knees in gratitude. But on the other hand, I've also had those more moments where I couldn't hear God speaking to me at all. The line of communication that was once so clear, so fluent and light, seemed very heavy, burdensome, and foggy. There might not be a better way to explain it other than God seemed silent. Has God ever seemed silent to you? If so, let's figure this out together as we unpack scripture and break down those old familiar truths that God speaks to us each day. Let's start with a prayer. Could everybody bow their heads and close their eyes with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for um, being here with us today. We pray that the words that I'm about to speak will be your words and that they will be able to touch whoever is here. We pray that you will bless us and guide us uh, throughout this Sabbath day and forgive our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Non-believers will tell you that the reason that God seems silent is because he is absent. And if we're being honest, in our darkest moments, there are some who might be tempted to believe that it's true. The enemy whispers these types of lies to us every single day. At any moment, the enemy is ready to creep in in any way he possibly can and try to convince us that God is not present, that God doesn't care, and that he's not interested in the daily struggles that you and I may face. But let me assure you that our God is mighty to save. He is always listening and he is longing to be with us in heaven forever. But it's hard to claim those types of promises when life beats us down and trials are ever present. In a time of suffering, David engaged in righteous self-talk about how he should respond in light of God's goodness. We read in our scripture reading for this morning in Psalm 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The call to wait on God is an invitation to trust and hope. It entails believing that one day, even if that day is not today, that he will make all things right. In times of waiting, as we seek God in prayer, we might learn to listen to him as well as talk to him, to shut out all of the chaos and quietly wait as he unfolds to us his person, purpose, promise, and plan for our lives. In the meantime, righteous self-talk is always a good way to stay positive. Sometimes we tend to engage in this negative, self-deprecating communication with ourselves where we somehow believe that we deserve the bad things happening to us. But that is not how God wants us to view ourselves. We were beautifully and wonderfully made by a creator who loves us more than we can ever imagine. As you start to look at yourself in a new light and practice righteous self-talk, it will cause a positive effect on your life. Most of the time, the silence is a matter of perspective. God has already spoken to us through his word and he speaks through nature. We read in Psalm 19, verse 1, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Just step out into nature, watch a beautiful sunrise, 
hide in the shade of the night, gaze upon the stars or stand high upon a mountain top, and you are going to be sure to feel God's presence and know that he is there through his creation. Romans 1, chapter 20 continues this point. It says, for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. Another way to hear God's voice when things seem unclear is to open the Bible every single day. As I said earlier, God speaks to us through his word. This is a good way to look at all the things that God has done for those in the past and know that he is the same God who is working in your life today. Think about it. David was on the run for eight years. Moses waited 40 years in the desert. And Abraham, he was 100 years old before his wife, Sarah, was able to have a baby. As you read about the Bible characters who might have made the same mistakes as you have, those people who have come to God over and over again, repenting, listening, waiting, obeying, connect to them and realize that those stories are not silence. In fact, they are words coming to life. Furthermore, prayer is essential in hearing God's voice. If that line of communication is blocked in any way, whether it be our inability to listen, not taking the time to talk to him, or unwillingness to stop and ask for his guidance and will, it becomes increasingly hard to hear what he is trying to tell us. Open that line of, of communication find designated times throughout the day to pray. It's even okay to set an alarm on your phone. Maybe start with morning, noon, and night. And think of intentional things in your life or the lives of others that need to be brought to God in prayer. As we make the conscious effort to practice righteous self-talk, seek God through creation, open his word daily, and keep that line of communication between us and God open. He will make his presence and voice known to us. He promises it so many times in the Bible. And we can rest assured that when God makes a promise to his people, he is faithful and just to follow through. This always reminds me of the story of Abraham and Sarah in the Bible. They were of very old age when they received their answered prayer from God. As we read in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse, verse 15 to be exact, it says, Abraham waited patiently and received what God had promised. Abraham and Sarah waited 25 years to have a child. I can't even imagine what the waiting process must have felt like for them. I wonder if they had days where God seemed silent. We know that they clung on to the hope that God would fulfill his promise to them, but I can't help but wonder if their human minds would ever stray away to wonder if their prayer would ever be answered. As I was reviewing my devotional this week, I stumbled upon a paragraph that sums it up perfectly. It said, and I quote, sometimes, the seemingly unjust silence from God ushers us from a disturbed heart to a bitter soul. And we start to feel something deep inside that contradicts everything we ever hold true. If God is good, why isn't he being good to me in this? And in this moment of raw soul honesty, we're forced to admit we feel a bit suspicious of God. We've done all we know to do, We've prayed all we know to pray. We've stood on countless promises with a brave face and still nothing. So what do we do when we feel set aside? What do we do when our hearts are struggling to make peace between God's ability to change hard things and his apparent decision not to change them for us? End quote. Wow, once I read that, my heart kind of sunk into my stomach a little bit because I felt every part of that last question. Let me read that last question to you again. 
It says, what do we do when our hearts are struggling to make peace between God's ability to change hard things and his apparent decision not to change them for us? I know how heartbreaking that can be to watch, especially when the people you love the most find themselves in what seem like unchangeable circumstances. But what do we do? Instead of taking matters into our own hands, we make our requests known to God. Pour out our wants, our hopes, our desires, and instead of pulling away from God in suspicion, we need to press into him even more. Filling that space with positive thinking, unrelenting faith, and earnest prayer. Remember at the beginning of the sermon when I said that the enemy whispers lies to us in hopes that we'll believe them and eventually turn away from God? Well, we are going to dissect this and we are going to counter those lies with the truth of God. As we walk through this, I want us to focus on these three truths. God longs to help us, God longs to transform us, and God loves us. So we are going to start with the first one. God longs to help us. The first line that the enemy might whisper is, nothing seems to be changing. God must be ignoring my cries for help. We are going to counteract that lie with the truth found in Psalm 10, one through two. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. During those times, I want you to remember that God longs to help you and that he leans in close to listen to you. The next line that the enemy might whisper is, I'm not sure God notices me or cares about me. It feels like my prayers don't even matter. The truth comes out of Matthew 10, 29 through 31. It says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs on your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are more valuable than many sparrows. During those times, I want you to remember that God longs to help you and that he cares about you deeply. The next line is, God is probably sick and tired of me and all of my weaknesses. The truth comes out of Isaiah 40, verses 28 through 29. It says, do you not know, have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. During those times, I want you to remember that God longs to help you and his strength is the answer for all of your weaknesses. The next slide focuses on how God longs to transform us. The first line that the enemy might whisper is, God can't possibly change someone like me. The truth comes out of Romans 8, 29. It says, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brothers and sisters. During those times, I want you to remember that God longs to transform you and that he is making you more and more like Jesus. The next lie is, God gave up on me a long time ago. The truth comes out of Philippians 1, 6. It says, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. During those times, I want you to remember that God longs to transform you and that he promises that he'll complete the work that he has been doing in you. The next lie is, God wishes I would just hurry up and get my act together. The truth comes from Philippians 2.13. It says, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. 
During those times, I want you to remember that God longs to transform you and that he is the one who will help to make the change. And our last slide focuses on how much God loves us. The first lie is, I am unworthy of being loved by God. The truth comes out of Romans chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. It says, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. During those times, I want you to remember that God loves you and that he pursues you, even when you may act a little unlovable. The next lie that the devil might speak to us is if God really loves me, he wouldn't have me feel this much pain. The truth comes out of James 1, 2 through 4. It says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. During those times, I want you to remember that God loves you and that he promises not to waste any of the pain. And the last lie that the enemy might whisper is, if I'm honest with God about my feelings, he'll be disappointed and stop loving me. The truth comes out of Psalm 62, 8. It says, trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. During those times, I want you to remember that God loves you and that he invites you to pour out your heart to him in honesty. Those were the nine truths that God wanted you to hear this morning. As you let those sink in, I want to let you know that you can claim those wonderful promises every single day in prayer. I will make sure that a copy of what I just read gets out to anybody who would like one. Uh, there might be someone listening today who feels that their prayers have gone unanswered. Some who might believe that God is too busy to care about them that he has been seemingly silent for what feels like too long in the midst of pain. But be encouraged and rest in the knowledge that God is not ignoring you. In fact, he is restoring you in the midst of the waiting process. If there is one thing that I want you to take out of this message today, it is that when God seems silent, don't stay silent keep talking to God. Don't let that line of communication get blocked. Don't let the enemy win. God has a plan and his plan is greater than anything we could dream up for ourselves. As we trust God in the waiting, may he show us the path that leads to the type of life that can only be found in him. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this Sabbath day that you've given us. We Pray that in those times where you might seem silent, that we will press into you and that we will open up your word, pray, and try to get to know you more as we go through the trials, as we go through the waiting process. We know that you're with us each step of the way. We pray that you will bless us and forgive our sins. In Jesus' name, amen.